measuring. So let's welcome Thomas Lynch. Thank you, Jorge. Thomas, you have 20 minutes for your presentation. I'll just now give you the money that you asked for that introduction. So my presentation, my slides are in English. I will speak Spanish. So we are going to speak about measuring any cast uh, prefix latency. Now, this presentation, I'm, uh, it's a bit of a trick, and you'll see what I'm speaking about at the end. So any cast prefixes. I mean, there's there was a presentation earlier from the municipality of Costa Rica that said that they would send their ANICAS from the DNS from 60 point, I think they mentioned. Ours are a bit smaller, 32 from 32 sites. And let me just look at my slide. ANICAS from 32 sites and our customers are also sending these any gas prefixes. So considering that internet is topological rather than geographical, maybe from city A, which is 10 kilometers from city B, that any gas prefix is actually taking a route that is going around to reach that site. And we consider this to be a suboptimal path different examples we have a huge internet service provider in spain and instead of going to madrid for ipv4 dns's would choose sao pablo so our dns's or our clients any cast in this company would go from madrid to sao paulo around 200 milliseconds when the Madrid Madrid latency is under 10 milliseconds. Interestingly enough, with the same company, with the same sites, everything the same, for IPv6, they selected Paris. Second example, an ISP, a local ISP in Singapore, which at the same time is uh, a, a customer for a tier one, so-called tier one provider. Instead of choosing Singapore, they would choose Seattle as the best route. We tried to enhance it and they ended up choosing Tokyo, but they would never choose Singapore, Singapore. Because again, we're speaking about topology rather than geography. They were connected to a trust transit provider and instead of being with us, they had a higher local preference for this traffic provider. The third example, connection of IXPs. What they did was to forward this to their clients peering with uh, local transit providers that in their countries are larger uh, internet providers. You'll see that I didn't put any names. However, what they did was that the clients in that city that were closer to another node that in a place that uh, they did the peering, they chose to leave to go. This was in Latin America. They chose to go to Miami instead of going from Latin America to Brazil, Chile, Mexico, or a, a range of countries. The, so, the solution for the previous examples were the typical things. There's not much information here, but it's working with the BGP communities, uh, traffic engineering with a cocktail, that's the way we call it, of a number of communities, BGP communities. For instance, if I am in Singapore, not to, not to send it to Europe, if I'm in Chile, avoid sending it to, to the United States or Asia, not to propagate those uh, prefixes or to do so, to propagate them, but uh, the, uh, uh, do it in a way that in the other regions it might have uh, 
smaller local preference. For instance, in Sao Paulo, precisely, the providers available, there are several, there are several local providers, and then we have these two transits, the tier one transits. And uh, so, for uh, as we want traffic to remain in Brazil, we propagate their, uh, the prefixes to them so that the, they won't propagate to North America or Europe. The big problem we face is that uh, the Latin American companies very often get connected with a transit provider in Miami. So the traffic goes Sao Paulo, Miami, Sao Paulo, Santiago, Miami, Sao Paulo, and so on with the, all the, the capitals in Latin America. This can be solved precisely if we have uh, local traffic providers and by sending these pr uh, international traffic providers the appropriate uh, units. And of course, peering through peering. Peering is the solution to most of these problems because you reach the local sites, especially with IXBR, Chile, etc. The communities, after working quite a lot, what we did was to cluster them in just one. Uh, it's the about your Anycast, and uh, actually, after that there's we match with the community and I apply different communities but how did we know that latency was high in our DNS's or the client prefixes well at the beginning uh, the customers were the ones that would complain they opened tickets saying well I am sending a route uh, from Sao Paulo and and one route uh, from Tokyo and yet uh, it's, uh, all goes to Tokyo. So what ha probably happened to the municipality that presented earlier. So at the beginning, we did it with the clients and then we started to use a number of tools to measure our DNS the Anycast of uh, our DNSs. The first tool, the simplest, uh, is uh, Pim T. I, uh, ping, uh, there are pings of uh, different uh, uh, servers, virtual machines all around the globe, and, and they ping an IP address, simply that. The other thing we used was a tool that is called DNS Perf. Think, um, P is absolutely uh, free of charge, but DNS per uh, uh, you pay for it. And thanks to the DNS perf, we reduced uh, our global latency from 40 milliseconds to less than 20 milliseconds. I don't want to uh, do marketing, but we use this tool, Kentic. They have 300 global agents. We, with them, we measured our the performance of our DNS, uh, the latency, and we worked with uh, in several geographies with different BGP communities, so that our peers or the peers of our peers would choose the best uh, paths to the DNS if they're in Europe. Uh, we want them to stay in Europe. If they're in South America, they should stay in uh, South America. If they're in Brazil, they should stay in Brazil. However, Pink P, if you uh, enter th there, you'll see that there are 40,000 virtual machines. Well, about that, approximately. DNS Perf also has about 300, 400 virtual machines, and it's uh, highly dedicated. You can't ping it. Uh, just uh, You can't ping just anything. You're only measuring DNSs. Uh, can take to, uh, well, again, it's excellent. However, the thing about it is that the global agents uh, include uh, just a few companies, Akamai, Amazon, our friends of Edge Uno, Two, and Google, different companies, but they give us a partial view still of the entire internet. So we need more. 
points to measure latency to uh, DNSs and uh, prefixes of clients that do any cast. So we needed more places, more organizations, different autonomous systems. That's very important. If I only used uh, Google's autonomous system or Edge Uno or Akamai, then everything would be okay with them. But there is a bunch of DNSs. So what we needed was a friend pinging to the Anycast prefixes. So here we arrived at the conclusion that it is, what is a friend? So I called 10 friends every two hours for a month asking whether they could ping 2001, 19F, uh, uh, colon, CCD, colon, colon, one. And uh, the answers were uh, ranged from 10 milliseconds to, uh, well, I wouldn't um, say this word. And uh, after some days, I just had only one friend left after two days. So the quality, this is not something I was looking for, but the quality of response in time uh, is significantly reduced if you call your friends at 3 a.m. just asking them to ping an IP address. So we continue to need those friends. And here, let me introduce a tool that's free of charge that was developed by ML, NLNOG, and it's called Ring. What is Ring? Well, here, there, you can access it. What Ring proposes is very simple. You provide me a virtual machine behind your autonomous system. It has to meet a number of requirements, and we allow you to access all these virtual machines we have. So I realized that they had 673 nodes, of 521 autonomous systems, and 61 countries. So that was precisely what I was looking for. So I wouldn't have to uh, give them a call or send a message because I can access these machines with uh, router passwords. Or Well, the Linux people are going to kill me, but for, for me, that's all the route. So how do you add uh, a node to the ring? It's very simple. They only request you to be a virtual machine behind an autonomous system that uh, uh, you have control of. So you configure the server. This is a Linux machine with Ubuntu. It needs to have a certain amount of memory of CPU, but you can see this again if you scan that QR code. So you request the information to the ring admins. The ring admins do magic for everything to work properly. They add the way you access is with a SSH key, and they configure it. They put it or whatever in the different servers in those 600 servers or virtual machines uh, around the world. Not only can you access, but uh, you can do commands. Uh, you can give commands. Uh, here from uh, uh, my machine, I'm having an access to a machine of NICBR they, that they have in Ring. From there, they give me a prompt, and from the prompt, I can ping SSH to other machines, MTR, whatever. The other condition is that, please, if we're going to give you this access, do not destroy the machines. As you see here, a ping from NICBR can be done easily. Then I'm doing a telnet to the HTTPS port to check the, whether I can connect or not for some reason. But there are also commands. You can enter the commands one by one, entering one machine. And But there are also commands 
what they do is to work with several machines at the same time. For instance, ring ping. What did what ring? I say ring ping my IP number, and the, it's going to choose by default ten servers randomly, and they're going to send a ping from each of them. Um, ring all is I'm going to give, give a command from all the virtual machines I wish. Here, for instance, does the laser work? No. So here, for instance, I'm uh, doing a dig of lacnaca.net from all the nodes available in Brazil. And it uh, gives me back the different nodes. You see one of Amazon, or one of H1, etc. Ring uh, trays. This is fun because ring trays will show me, uh, will, will uh, show me an image of uh, how the packets uh, travel using different machines. You, you don't see it very well, but there are several in Europe. There are some in South America and others in Asia that go to the same IP number that is the Anycast that I'm sending that I'm propagating to the internet and they have access through from uh, different places. If I do the ping, I'm, I'm going to go to the next. Uh, I can ping from 50 servers by default. I can indicate three, so it's minus and three, and or I can uh, uh, dedicate uh, and 10. What's the use of this? Uh, 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 ping, ring ping. The first node there is in Australia. It says that it has 36 milliseconds to my Anycast prefix. We have a node in Australia that should be smaller. So you can work directly with that autonomous system, 136557, and see why there's such a latency to my Anycast prefix. Um, our ping N0 takes all the uh, uh, all the servers available, 603 at the time, and it gives information on average. The uh, it gives uh, the average and the median. And also, if there were virtual machines that were unable to access, so the. The trap is uh, an invitation. The reason why I bring this presentation is, first of all, to see the tools available to measure any cast. And the second reason is to invite you to join this ring. In Latin America, there are only 15 nodes, two in Argentina, nine in Brazil, two in Chile, and two in Mexico. So, to measure whatever you want to measure better and even to access maybe you don't want to measure in your country but you want to measure from different regions and the best thing would be to get together uh, to join this community the ring community so you can later have access to these 500, 600 virtual machines around the world. So the conclusions? We need to keep any cast prefixes latency low. It just depends on how you advertise those prefixes. We need to work with the different ASNs. We need to measure from the different remote sites how to reach our ANICAS prefixes, associating joining rank. There are only 15 servers in LATAM. I think there could be more. And my last conclusion, please do not call your friends at 3 a.m. to ping your servers. Any questions? Are there any questions for Thomas? Yes, please come close to your mic. Please tell us your name, Pablo Cuesho. My first question for Thomas is, the Rinkerman said, is it pre-established? 
if I want to run my own script. Is it possible? Yes, it is. At the end of the day, what you have, I'm, I here I have a bring SSH, but you could have a regular SSH to ring a beer and so on. You can just have a script that will SSH the different servers through an API, an API that will tell you the name of all servers and you can use that to start working, most definitely, yes. Hi Thomas, how are you? Alejandro from Hidio from uh, Argentina Tele Center. I thought the tool was interesting. I was not familiar with Ring. I have two questions for you. The first one, I understand that it is good up to a certain extent that it is similar to having a machine or a system distributed in a similar way to the Atlas Rye project. I think that this gives you other options. So in comparing it with Atlas uh, Rye, does it have a credit system to access this time uh, for access time to the different machines and my second question does it have any sort of portal interface or controller to interact with apis to automatize the tests that i will run the first one no you can access the machines whenever you want the commands the ssh I mean, you can do it to any machine. The general commands, the ones that I'm showing right now, by default, it will choose 10 different machines randomly. Or you could use this zero and just have them all. So no, there is no restriction. You can use it for yourself a very well-known company that grants access to many BGP companies and that includes Trace would provide or offer this as part of their bed testing, which it wasn't. The others, they do have API commands to choose the number of nodes per country, the name of the nodes, but you cannot execute commands. Or, or maybe I didn't get your question. Yes, that was actually my question. From one single site, using an API, could you just trigger the execution of certain commands instead of just going in? That, that was my question. The API gives you the information on the nodes, the countries, as, as I showed in my other slides. For example, I have this command only from Brazilian nodes. But no, no, there is no portal. With the API, you can download the list and therefore you can get your scripts. That is correct. Thank you, Thomas. Very interesting. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm. No questions, no questions in the room or online. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Alejandro, for your questions. And thank you, Thomas. For